hi, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, I'm Chris James with Award Radar, and um, I'm so happy to uh, be talking to you both about your new movie, Run. Thank you. Hey, thank Chris. You for chatting with us. Of course. I feel a bit like I'm in searching. I feel like that predicted something. <laughs> um, but, yeah. But my first question um, is for you, Anish. Um, so obviously Searching was your first feature in 2018 and it was wonderful mm -hmm. as was Run. Uh, when you were making that at Run as your second feature, did you feel um, a bit more self-assured now that you had one feature film under your belt or was this sort of pressure for your sophomore film? Kind of how was it going into uh, movie number two? More pressure. Um, you know, I, like we're going to, uh, you know, like when we were making searching, I was coming off of a stint having made commercials at Google and having made a lot of stuff there that was very techy and very like took place on screen. So I felt like I knew my way around it, even though what we were doing as a movie was unique. You know, it felt like everybody around in a way, like when I started the project, it's like everyone around was relearning their jobs, but I had been doing this for a little time before. So I kind of had a general idea of what we were going on. With Run, it was the opposite. Now I'm coming into a situation where everybody around me has done this many times before, and I was the first person making a normal movie. You know, and to me, that like that was a very sort of intimidating and scary first few days because you're not only learning, trying to make the movie, but you're also like learning how movies are made. You know, and I think like it, that's a tough balance because you're trying to do it with a straight face and act like you know all these terminology and words that you are hearing are things that are very natural to you, but like. You know, it, it, it was very, very, it was, it was tough in the beginning, but I think just like Kira, who's the actor in this movie, kind of like you can see from day one to day 30, how her just confidence level and how her performance level just increased. I think I could see some sort of arc by the end of the period of it was like, I know how to make a movie. And I think that was so much of the reason that this movie was designed this small and this contained and this simple was to be able to provide at least for myself, some sort of conscious, like next step in experiment in the, in the question of could I, do I know how to make an old movie? Absolutely. No, that's great. And also it probably helps to have a talented producer like Natalie on the project it, with you. It who, saves the project. Yeah, it helps a lot. Absolutely. So I know Natalie, um, you were on both Run, but also on Searching as well. Um, I'd love to hear a bit more of how you and Anish connected and what you look for when you find these sort of long-term collaborators. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we met actually because of Seb, so who is my husband, but also producing partner and Anish's writing partner. And the two of them were working together out of film school which is right about the time when I met Sev. And I, I, I actually, the reason Sev and I are a producing team and also life partners is really because of Anish. I remember he, um, when we first met, he pitched me an idea for a movie that he was writing with Anish. And I literally cut him off like halfway through the pitch. And I said, I know how that story ends. And I basically pitched back to him the ending of a movie that he was writing. And it was basically like, just an example of like how I think the three of us all have very similar tastes and kind of grew up watching the same movies but so we kind of connected through film school and then when they'd written searching Sev called me and at the time I was filming another movie um for the Duplass brothers I was producing another movie and I, Sev called me and was like I need someone you know to come and do this with me and he sent me what was like a I think a, a treatment at the time and I read it and I was like, I'm, I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to pull it off because I'm deep in this other thing. But I read it and when I put it down, I just, the idea of someone else producing it made me really, really, really jealous. So I called them and I was like, I'm in, I guess I'll do two movies at once, I'll figure it out. And, you know, on searching, we, we spent over a year editing that movie and it was really Anish Sev and our two editors, like in this tiny edit room, working for over a year and a half. And I think in that edit room, especially we built just a, re a really strong trust and kind of, you know, similar filmmaking language and um, just a foundation for a really good partnership. And I think that's like what you look for and that's what you hope for. And we've all kind of found it in each other. And it, it's, it's, it's a great thing and it's rare having worked on other movies. It, it doesn't, it doesn't not always pan out like that. So. No, absolutely. And it's so wonderful that all of you are so tight knit. That makes for just such a wonderful collaboration process. 
Um, Anish, you, you talked a bit about how um, you were sort of inspired by the tech world for searching. I'd love to hear a bit more about um, how you started coming up with the story for Run. I got some like vibes of Carrie almost in this sort of mother-daughter relationship. And I loved how um, it was simple and yet progressed in such interesting ways. Um, sort of how, where did the idea come from? Did you say Carrie? It cut off a little bit. Oh yes, Carrie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I stole shots from Carrie in this movie. I remember having, we had Carrie on the board of, of, of references, uh, some great shots in that movie. Um, but like the shadow, anyways, uh, the, um, so, I, you know, the biggest influences on, on, on Run were like Alfred Hitchcock movies and M. Night Shyamalan movies. Like there were obviously exceptions, like there's Misery, there's Baby Jane, there's Carrie a little bit. There's like, uh, um, uh, like 10 Cloverfield Lane. There's a lot of these like contained, very thriller thrillers, but like the movies of Hitchcock and Shyamalan were the ones that really sort of like propelled me to like, as like the North star of what we were trying to make. And, you know, just to backtrack a little bit, like I, I always wanted to make the opposite of searching at the top, once we, once we finished searching, you know, like I wanted to make something that I could prove to myself, like I was saying earlier, that I, that I could be a filmmaker. And, and to do that, it was, set something in two characters, one house, you know, very, very simple to balance out the complexity of searching. So the best films to me that did those were those films by those filmmakers, you know, like films that didn't rely on blood or gore or violence, but rather just like finding out in silence if something was going to happen or not, you know, like those movies from Hitchcock were like incredible. And I wanted to make a movie that was like, reminded me of them, you know, and it wears, it's this movie wears its inspiration so obviously on its sleeve, you know, like there's such direct call outs to, Hitchcock's works and Shyamalan's works and I mean like mostly those two everywhere but like Stephen King you know like I, like it's just throughout literally throughout the movie and I think like those were always the goalposts for this movie was to make something classic in that style. Absolutely and I, I like what you said about really using silence and I think part of what makes that so effective is you really rely on your performers and your actors to deliver um the certain moments of the screen. Obviously, uh, Sarah Paulson is a legendary actress, but I'd love to hear more about the process of casting uh, Kara Allen, uh, who's a newcomer, but is really just fantastic. Uh, how did you um, find her and uh, what was sort of that progression like from day one to day 30 that you were talking about? Yeah, I, I can jump in and talk about the casting process and then and you should obviously jump in. But, you know, from the very beginning, we knew we wanted to cast um, a disabled actor to play this role. It just made sense to us on so many levels. And we worked with a really, really incredible casting director, Rich Delia, who did this like grassroots approach, basically. Like he put the word out on Facebook and, you know, um, acting clubs and, and schools all around the nation and, and I think Canada too. And we got like hundreds of tapes of all these like unknown actors and, and some known too. And I remember one day we saw Kira's tape and it was from her dorm room in Columbia. And she was just so grounded. And like, she just, she just felt like daughter. We all, I think we all had the same reaction. Like she feels like daughter. And then, you know, within a couple of weeks like she was flying out to LA and auditioning with Anish in person. And then she came out again to meet with Sarah and the two of them clicked and we all just, we, we knew she was our daughter and we're really lucky to have her because in a lot of ways she, um, you know, she, she taught us a lot about what it's like to be disabled and, um, you know, both from a filmmaking perspective and, and how we could, you know, make it work with her, but also from a story perspective, she shared, she shared a lot that ended up, you know, going into the script and, and, and adjusting and tweaking little things. So she, She's a fantastic actor and was just an asset to the project as a whole. And then Anisha. I agree. I, I, I don't know what I. No, I think there's a question about her, something about performance, but I think. Oh, yeah. oh, Chris, can you repeat the part about that performance? Yeah, because I know you talked about how day one to day 30 was just this wonderful transformation for her as an actress. I'd love to hear more about um, what was like, it was like working with her on set and how um, she grew as a performer. Totally. You know, I think like this is somebody who you can hear me right. Okay. Right. Right now. Yeah. All right. Cool. So this is somebody who has never been in a movie before, you know, and like you're asking them to go head to head with Sarah Paulson, you know, like 
it's a joke, you know? And so like to, for that person, very similar to my arc, you know, like of going into like never having done this before kind of a deal, like you're going to have nerves, you're going to have questions, you're going to have a lot of like insecurities and fears as a human being, you know, going into that situation, but to watch her understand that like she has a voice and she has a place and she has, she's the lead of this movie, you know, and like, um, was really cool to watch, you know, like it, it, in the beginning, you and you can see it in just the number of takes that we used to run. You know, in the in the early days of the film, we'd be running 12 takes of Kira. By day five, by sorry, by by day 28, we were running like four takes of Kira, three takes of Kira. And it's just like that's quality. You know, and it's not like, and it's like you got a factor in for this stuff because she's so new, but like the talent is there, you know, like, and, and that's what we're trying to mind, but like her ability to like grab that talent and show it much earlier was something that you could easily see um, over the course of the, the, the whole shoot. Absolutely. Um, and no, she does such a wonderful job and she also plays so well off of Sarah Paulson who is yeah. really starts to, um, show more layers as the film goes on. Um, was there a long rehearsal process um, with Sarah and how did you work with her on developing this character of mother who's such a uh, wonderful horror thriller figure? <laughs> yeah, so Sarah was the opposite of how I work with sort of Kira. Like for me, Sarah was such a, I, like she's such a veteran actress that like, you know that she, if you give her the right tools to perform, she's going to. So for me, what I did was like write this like 15 page, 10 point font book of her backstory and her life and her character quirks and her, why she wears the clothes she wears and what's that thing in her room and like all these random stories about who she was. And I spent all of our rehearsals, not really going over the script, but rather just going over who she was as a person in, that, in, in, in those regards. And by the time that she came on to set, it was like watching the person who had soaked all of that in and take after take was just specific. You know, like it wasn't, we weren't choosing our takes on with Sarah Paulson based off of quality. We were choosing them off of like which direction we wanted the story to go. And that's because every single take was, was delivered with such specificity and such caliber that you're like, I mean, this is what makes her great. Like she is one of our great actors. That is like, that's a fact, you know, like, uh, and to be able to watch that and, and to contribute even the smallest role in a, one of her performances is like certainly a, a career highlight for me. Absolutely. No, one of the interesting things of the movie uh, is you have seen um, between scene one and scene two, it jumps 17 years and it kind of jumps in the middle of the story. Um, and so I was wanted to know how much of like that backstory you built out, but uh, based on that answer, what were some of your favorite bits of backstory between mother and daughter Whoa. that didn't necessarily get like spelled out in the film, but were just part of that 10 point font uh, backstory doc? That's a great question. That's a really good question. Um, Nat had a re Nat, you have a really good answer for this. The other, the other, the. Well, I well, how spoilery can we go in this? I don't. I, well, uh, we'll do a soft spoiler <laughs> alert. So <laughs> for anyone spoiler. watching, maybe tune out until after the movie. <laughs> My favorite thing of backstory is in actually Kira's backstory, which, which she wrote. Um, she wrote this really vivid paragraph and I don't remember all the details because this was like two years ago now, but there was this blurb about how when she was, a, like she has a memory of being a kid, like like three, two or three years old and walking up the stairs and seeing her mom with the laundry basket and the key detail being that she was walking. And like the way she, and she wrote this herself, like the way she described it, I remember like all the hairs on my body just like stood up. It was so vivid and like beautiful. It, 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 it's amazing. It's like tiniest detail, but tells you everything you need to know about the story in a way. Yeah, and like for, for Kira, there was, or for Sarah, I was like just thinking about what, because it was so, I haven't been asked this question. That's really cool. Like, I think one of the coolest details in her backstory was like her obsession with tabloid culture and celebrity <laughs> culture. Uh, um, and like you can see in the film that like she is always like carrying um, uh, like OK Magazine or tabloids or like following like movie news and is like very kind of up to date with that. And a lot of that was a result of like these because her her own backstory came from basically going from home to home to home to home to home to home to home because people just like threw her away in a lot of ways as, as her own sort of backstory. And these were characters that were staying consistent in her lives, you know, like these like famous people. 
And so like that element of like why she got attracted to like celebrity and to, 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 to characters on screens was like really cool. And why uh, like the role of the movie in, in the movie plays such a big role. Uh, I don't know, that, that was something that was, I really like enjoyed working on her with that. Wonderful, no, that's such a great detail. Um, well, we have to wrap it up, but I want to thank you both for talking to me and to all of our readers at uh, Awards Radar. Uh, go see Run. It comes on Hulu on Friday, November 20th. And uh, thank you both so much for your work. I'm really excited to see this go out to the public.